the first thing I'd like to do is to honor Dr. Ali Gopin, whose vision helped create this place and create this meeting. We worked with Hilda very fondly and trustingly, and this is what we've come up with over the years. Isn't it beautiful? Going upstairs is just such a, a blessing to be up there and to watch it. I felt today, even though they were late, it was like auspicious to be able to watch them bring God out of the shrine and bring it to us so that we could honor the spirit and the glory that we're talking about today, about Hilda's inspiration and Dr. Holly Gotham's. May we also take a moment to thank Betsy Elizabeth Pepper. For many years she led this meeting, these Hilda celebrations here at the Hindu temple. She is one of our constant of love and support for all. Let us send her a sweet, soft message of appreciation for a job well done. Let's just for a moment send her our love. talk about Battle for Right, which is so pertinent at this time, and it's on page 94 and 95 of the Skanda book. I battle for right, for light, with all my might, Sri Skanda, be with me. At my least call for help, hear me and be near me. I belong to a faithful band of warriors known as the warriors of light in the upper realms, and I am written in the book of life under that title. You have to say it thrice. It says, <laughs> Skanda says thrice, so let's do that. I battle for right, for light, with all my might. Sri Skanda, be with me. At my least call for help, Hear me and be near me. I belong to a sacred band of warriors known as the warriors of light in the upper realms, and I am written in the book of life under that title. I battle for right, for light, with all my might. Sri Sandha, be with me. At my least call for help, Hear me and be near me. I belong to a faithful band of warriors known as the warriors of light in the upper realms, and I am written in the book of life under that title. Warriors of truth and love, warriors of light, Hear the voice of Skanda call to follow him this night. O oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. Skanda's veil is Jyoti, Goddess of the light, who leads us upwards ever to our true birthright. O oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. Skanda guides us safely through the pitfalls of our mind. With courage, truth, and mastery, our true self we shall find. Oh, 
Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. The time has come to heed his call, to rise up to the light. For the age of God to come, we must take up this fight. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. So when you see a rainbow in the sky or on TV, just say his mantra three times, and with you he will be. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory. Guide us on our quest. Thank you. <laughs> it reminded me of Hilda's talent shows. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine wasn't able to make it here tonight, which I'm sorry to say. And today, I mean. And I decided I would jump up part of my lesson to the beginning. Hilda Charlton, spiritual warriors for our time. These are the times Hilda trained us for. These are the times to use Hilda's training to help ourselves and others. This is our time to live the simple life, defined not by our desires, rather our highest goal. Using the legacy of Hilda's teachings, to help us in our everyday lives. What have we learned as we become spiritual warriors? She taught us to be. When do we use the skills Hilda taught us to help the world with? Where is the battle taking place? And how might we change the world around us for a greater purpose? It is up to us to do the work on earth. To those who have yet to meet Hilda, I call it the great experiment. Many years ago, I had the opportunity to write in, on the internet in a discussion group called alt.christnet. There are hundreds of pages of discussion under the name Merlin at tuna.net. It was an open discussion group about Christianity and God and wasn't my opportunity to practice Hilda's teachings. <coughs> Many who wrote on the board were just interested in tearing down the discussion with a common demand, show me God, prove there is a God. My response, I can't bring God to anyone on the silver platter. I can't call God down from the heavens to prove anything to anyone unlike Job of old. That the real question was, what can you do? What can we do to find a glimpse of God for ourselves? I would challenge these people to try the great experiment, to begin the journey to find God. It is simple. And it has worked, sometimes for Merlin, love, simply love. Love till it hurts and love some more. No matter what is happening to us or those around us, love when love seems lost. And then still and gently love some more. Hold to this love in the world that doesn't want to hear about love and see what happens. Sit in this love for just a minute. Be grateful 
Be happy. Be joyous in this love in this moment. Feel the love in this room. Let go of the world we've just come from. Let go of the worries that will bubble up again and again sometime soon. They will try to find you later. Let go and let God. We have prepared ourselves today like brides for this meeting. We are wearing our Sunday best. We have participated in a cleansing, a reset, and a rededication to our highest goals upstairs during the puja. Did you feel it? Don't you sense it? Isn't it a part of our lives? That's why I come here. Of course, the suggestion to try the great experiment of loving no matter what didn't satisfy anyone on the net. They, they had a simple demand to see God now, and a solution that might ask them to be involved seemed out of the question. While responding to these guys, yes, there were very few women at the time, Jesus came and asked only one thing. When you speak for me, when you tell people about God, and what God means to you. Treat people you speak with as I have treated you. That was all Jesus said. Sound familiar? No matter how negative the conversation, how personally insulting, or just plain dumb the conversation is, we are asked as spokesmodels, as representatives for God, to treat others as God is treating us. Treat everyone with the same love and compassion we have here today. I wasn't told to worship anyone or any God. I wasn't told to hate anything. There is no commandment of or else. I was asked to love others as God loves us all. Isn't this Hilda's core message? Isn't this how we prepare ourselves to, to be spiritual warriors? What is our armor? What do we require to be a spiritual warrior? Let's think for a moment. What did Hilda teach? Hilda called her meetings Lessons of Life. And those lessons did what? Showed us through Hilda's example of a way of living. How to live in peace. How to take the garbage out in love. How to treat ourselves with respect. How to solve our problems with hope. Hilda taught us how to live in love. For those who were able to listen to the class on about December 1st, 1987, I'm sorry there were no extra D CDs at the back. You had to download it online, and I hope some of you did. What was the first question Hilda was asked when she visited a yogi in India? What did you eat? What was the second question Hilda was asked? How do you make a living? What? They didn't show her Jacob's ladder or a stairway to heaven. They asked about her daily life, wanted to know that she was taking care of the basics of living in this world. Hilda's lessons of life. And that may and that may be where we may need to start to make sure we take care of ourselves. When we have done what we can to help others grow and live in this world, we can then start to help. When we help ourselves, we can then start to help others. Who puts the oxygen mask on first? The mother. So she can help her child 
No? Is that not the rule? Can anyone recall some of the advice for living a whole life that Hilda gave us? Besides, tie up your camels and take your cheap shoes to Darshan. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Be a friend to everyone and expect no friendship in return. Treat everyone as if they're a child or a drunk. Anyone else? Can anyone remember another one? Keep your big mouth shut. Thank you. NBC. <laughs> closed. Keep your big mouth closed. I had made a list at work and then I got home and I didn't have the list, so it was really, I, I, I got con confounded at that. Not what. No reaction. Exactly. Take what you got and make what you want. Exactly. The difference between us and God is that we have a point of view and God has a viewing point. Say that louder, please. Yeah. The difference between us and God is that we have a point of view and God has a viewing point. Wow. Um, being easy to answer of life. Excellent. Life is a series of constant adjustments. That's right. This simple message of being in love, no matter what is happening to us, is the only armor we need. Being a spiritual warrior isn't about fighting with physical weapons. Our tools are our talents and the love we bring to this weary world. In love with Hilda. What I've done is I've invited the stalwarts that always come and sing for us to take a moment and tell us something about their life with Hilda. Because we always just ask them to sing and not talk. Is that the mic okay for you, Peter? No, uh, that's Okay, um, now you tell me if I'm running too long and I'll cut it I sure will. <laughs> okay, I was, I was going to call this basically my spiritual autobiography. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, and I had very loving parents, and I went to the First Presbyterian Church down there, and a wonderful minister named Doug Martin, and so I, even though I was Christian, I didn't have the usual dogmatic stance that most Christians do. I, I remember one time um, when I was in <clears throat> early high school, it was like a weekend retreat, and it was a spiritual type of retreat, and there was this little small, a minister who spoke to us and he said, I'm just like a child. He was very intelligent and articulate. He said, I'm just like a child. My faith is just like that of a little child. He said, and a smile on his face. And it just went right to my heart and touched me. And then after that was over, all the other kids were going around kind of joking and play. But I went off into the woods by myself and I was just moved. I was crying, you know, tears were flowing. And I said, oh God, what am I supposed to do, you know, in life? And and I felt that he said he communicated to me very, very important things I won't go into detail. Then uh, I uh, went to the uh, University of Rochester for two years. I, I had my uncle got me in up there because he had gone to Eastern School of Music. And uh, there was one particular professor that uh, he didn't say anything directly uh, against uh, of people with belief in God, but he, he tried to kind of indicate that it was a little kind of, uh, you know, not very rational. And so I, when, I didn't like this, but, you know, I, it, I couldn't avoid the logic of what he was saying. So I was lying in bed one night, I remember, and, and I just was thinking, my God, it, how can I not believe in God? But, and, but somehow I just felt like I had to drop the belief. So I, I did. And I, I felt like something went out of me. My soul went right out, flew out of my body at the moment. And, and then the, my tears kind of dried up and I kind of relaxed and I thought, well, this is not so bad, you know. And so for four years, I was a devout atheist. I would have to describe myself as. But I started, I read things and I talked to people and I, I changed my mind. By the time I was 24, I had come back to knowing that there was a God. And, you know, I read all the biography of Yogi. If you haven't read that, you must. It's an incredibly deep, profound book. Uh, it's mostly uh, Yogananda's experiences with superhuman people. 
And they all have the same basic belief, you know, that's so hard to put into words, the one being God. Uh, it, but somehow that belief worked incredibly for them because they could do superhuman things. Anyway, uh, I moved up to New York in 1978 and I, for mu my musical career, you know, I was playing music. And I, I didn't make a lot of money, or, you know, but I, at least I wrote a lot of songs, and one of which I'm going to sing for you in, the, in a few minutes. <laughs> but uh, uh, I happened to, to meet Judy at uh, uh, what the, uh, uh, it's called the uh, Great Hudson River Revival, it's, you probably know about it. Every Father's Day weekend, they have this wonderful uh, uh, thing, big uh, music, uh, speakers, you can dance, you just great food and everything. And anyway, and so I went up with her a few times and I noticed that she was very, very uh, wrapped up in her teacher. You know, she, she talked about this woman, Hilda, Hilda Chandra, and I. So uh, Hilda was away for the summer, basically. The first time she, I had a chance to see her was September of, this was 87. Getting too close to the end of her life, no one knew it at the time. But anyway, I, I went, I, I was I kind of was suspicious, you know. I, I'd seen a few gurus and teachers and I didn't really call them, you know, hardly any of them. So I went there expecting to, you know, check her out. I got there a little bit late, walked in and the room was, the auditorium was quiet and Hilda was on the stage. She was talk, talking softly and I just, Something just came over me. It was like I, I'd never seen anyone quite like this, just radiating love. And I said, that, that's a true saint right there. And of course, she was a, a master, not a, a saint, but it, you think of a saint as someone who loves everybody and, and radiates love. And that's what made me think that. And so I was determined to come from then on to Jilda's classes. I only saw her twice more, and I'll regret to the day I die that one time I just was late getting off from work. And I, I didn't come, I should have. But anyway, she passed away before long after that. And I started going to uh, <clears throat> David uh, Pomerantz's daily, weekly classes, not daily, and I will leave these both. And I learned a tremendous amount from both of those gentlemen. And it's just, uh, you know, I, I, oh, and I should mention this. I, I was too shy to go up and introduce myself the three times that I saw her classes, but she walked by, at the end of one of them walking out the door and she looked at me and she looked into my soul. I could just feel it. And that, so after she had passed away, uh, you know, I can't remember exactly how long, maybe a year or something, I was asleep and all of a sudden she appeared in a dream that wasn't a dream. You've had those dreams, a certain, certain, lots of dreams are like Freud said, wish fulfillment, you know, but this was nothing like that. It was a visitation. And there she was, and oh, she was dressed all in a wonderful red outfit. And she, she said some powerful, incredible things to me, just a few, and then, and then went away. And I, I knew that, that she was looking after me from then on, you know. And I, I became attached to Sai Baba also, but, you know. Uh, but one thing that Sai Baba said was, Hilda is the best teacher in the West. I don't know how many of you have heard that, that quotation. But anyway, uh, I'm so, so glad that, that I came in contact with, with Hilda and Hilda's kids and, and thank all of you for everything that you have, have done for me. This was is called Open Your Eyes. <clears throat> See what you think of it. Yeah. It just seems kind of appropriate for this uh, setting. <laughs> Time has turned to morning. Look where you will, there'll be new sights arrayed for you, <clears throat> new sounds without a warning. Today there's magic around each corner, and every bird tells your fortune. Open your door. Go and find what's in store for you. 
a day like you never know. There's a new love awaiting you, one like you've always wanted. Look in each eye that you meet, and though many you won't see you, still don't be daunted. The right step will lead to a faded moment. You'll discover an ocean you've seen in your dreams. Spread your arms wide, welcome in what was meant for you, someone unique, your own. And let an ecstasy ravish you, life in each leaf and stone. to somebody about organizing today, Linda and Janice and, and Judy, we all had the same idea. It wasn't any one of ours idea, it was Hilda's. Janice? In, I give you my infinite, infinite love and gratitude for being in my life. I don't know if I would have even been alive, I don't know where I would have been, or where, what I would have done if it weren't for you in my life. Uh, you were the door to absolutely everything. Uh, it was a show of me that I could go any place, any time, anywhere, to any church, any synagogue, any temple, any sweat lodge, any, any place, any spiritual place, and we feel totally at home and totally at ease and that she always said that if you agreed with something, you felt it was yours, take it. Take it into yourself. It's for you. If it was something that maybe you didn't understand, well maybe you weren't ready for it yet. And maybe if it was something that you already knew, you can just say, thank you God. I know that already. Isn't that wonderful? And, and not to take anything to, if something just didn't apply to you or it wasn't for you, not to say anything negative about anyone or anything, but just observe it, draw in, and if it's not for you, walk away. And if it is, then ingest it, digest it, assimilate it, and let it flow in through and around you and out to the world. And when there is love, we, Merlin and I were talking about this, it's fear not. And that was Jesus' message to me too, the first time I was in a, a class. Uh, I never met Milton in person, but I was taught by her kids. And, for my first teacher was Ira Seaman, and I didn't even know he was with Hilda. <laughs> I had been in search of Hilda for a long, long time. 
things are getting really serious now. We really have to wake up, really have to pay attention to everything we do and say and think. We need to claim our own mastery now, if I were a master. Turn to me in all your faith and determination, and my loving power will help. Do not waver, do not hesitate in the time of need. An army marching to battle must first trust the general to give the right and correct instruction. I give you the highest and the greatest of instructions. I bring to you through the battle of life 
which now is beginning to break into the final battle of right from wrong, of good and evil, against each other. God will be the final victor. The battle must be waged within you, yourself. There is a battlefield. Children, I have not been called down through your love to be with you on earth at this time, haven't I? Have I not told you again and again that I was brought into form, created for this battle that now wages on earth? Cannot you come forth as my soldiers to be my, by my side, and I by yours to conquer each and every problem as it arises? Watch every move, every feeling, every thought, and conquer the evil with right thinking. I, Skanda, son of Shiva, am the epitome of truth, of strength. You cannot fail or falter when I am your general, ready to lead you through the greatest fray, day after day. Judy? Come and 
moment to share with. The gratitude of a satsang, the sangha. So let us now come into a place in our heart of sincerity. And let us begin our slow, gentle journey into love with a sincere heart. A sincere heart free of judgment, prejudice, a place of trust, a place of humility, a place of openness. So let our hearts become sincere, as sincere as her heart was. And let's just breathe into our heart center. And let's breathe in sincerity. The part of you that says, I'm here. I love you, God. I love you, Hilda. I love you, Skanda. I love you all. That place of sincerity. And from that sincerity comes devotion. So breathe into the center of your chest now. Just let love flow into that center and let it flow out. Breathe into your heart. 
Exhale how sincere it is. And feel it begin to grow. Your heart center, your center of light. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let Hilda welcome her into your sincere heart. Welcome her into this moment. Welcome her into your life with such deep openness and sincerity and gratitude. How much she loves you. How much you love her. The calling, the need, and the fulfillment. So we breathe into the center of our chest, a place of sincerity, a sincere heart. Breathe in again. Let the love flow into you. Let your love flow through you as you breathe out that sincere heart. Let your love expand you. Let it embrace you. Let it embrace all things. Breathe in now, grace. And a merited blessing. Through grace, she called you. Through grace, we are here. Through grace, we have the lessons we've received. Through grace, we share the lessons. Let your breath fall in. Know that this is grace. As the prana flows into you, you're preparing yourself. We prepare ourselves. With a sincere heart and the abundance of grace. Let's think for a moment of all the grace in our life. All the blessings. Water to drink and bathe with, air to breathe, family to love, skies that expand. grace of knowing, the grace of learning, and the grace of not knowing. Just feel all the grace flow into you. And feel Hilda's grace flowing into you. And from that grace, flow into ourself, the real self, the one self. Self in each being, the self in each being in this room. Nobody, no mind. No desires, no thoughts, the self.
now. Just be here in the self. The one self. Let it happen. Let it be. And now Hilda meets you. This is where she meets us. Herself. Ourself. One self. Never born. Never die without beginning, without end, always being. Let that self, that light, that divine. that radiance and luminosity fill what's left of your legs like a golden river. Let it fill every atom and every cell of your being where the self dwells. Breathe in again to your heart. And let that luminosity begin to flow down your arms, into your hands, into your fingers, into your palms. Allow the alchemy to take place. Breathe in again. Breathe into your heart. Let that radiance begin to fill your torso, your chest. Let it flow all the way up and fill your face and your eyes, your skull. How luminous the self is. How radiant. that radiance begins to flow beneath us into the earth, nurturing her, staying as far as we could think. Self has no beginning or end. And it flows to the left of us as far as we can think. Clearing all space, renewing all space, flows to the right. Flows behind us, in front of us, above us. This who we are. Breathe in. This radiance once more. Into the self, into the Atma. Let it rearrange every atom of the cell. If it still needs arranging. Now we are clear. Now we are prepared. Now we are open for Hilda, created by Victoria Raid, that she can ascend from a heavenly world. A goddess of light, of love, whatever she is to you. And 
whether it be a teacher, a master, or your beloved. Feel this radiance and luminosity calling her from her heaven world, creating a vibration conducive to her. Let her love you. Do nothing, say nothing. Just let her love you. Breathe into your heart. Let her love you with all her love. Breathe it in from her. Feel her breath flowing into your heart. Letting her love you just as you are. Just as you are. Waking you to this moment of love. So free. I feel you, immerse you. Overflow from you. And now let her heal you. See her hand in front of you. Or her eyes looking into you. Or a smile on her face. Let her heal you. whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally. Let her heal you. She knows what you need before you do. Let her heal you. Welcome her. Allow her to protect you. Allow her to protect you, to heal you, to love you. with grace. Let you love her, love her. Mm -hmm. 
as you love her. Her radiant light comes from her heart into your heart. strength. See her how you see her now. Is she holding the veil? Is she blessing you with her hands? Is she smiling at you? Is she tapping you on your heart or your head? her love you the way she needs to love you because that's the way you need to be loved. Now allow yourself the luxury of enjoying her form. You can see her so clearly in front of you. And if you can't see her, you can feel her. And if you can't see her, that you cannot feel her. You know her because she knows you. Now from the center of her heart, see a ray of loving light. Feel that light flow into your heart. Ray of light flow into your throat. Breathe out from the throat. Let it flow into the third eye. Just feel her golden hand above your head blessing you. From her golden hand becomes a waterfall of golden light flowing over you. Cleansing you and renewing you. flows into you. That waterfall of light flows into the earth. Renewing her. Do you feel as though your feet are touching? A golden radiant heel planet. That light begins to flow up from your feet into your solar plexus. Flows down from the heavens into your heart. That heart, the dwelling place of the Most High, 
that you begin to draw the energy in from the left of you and the right of you. Now, open heart, peaceful mind. We say thank you to Hilda. When we thank her, we thank ourselves. Just see her before you. See her so clearly. See her holding up the light. And see that light that she holds in her right hand going out to the universe, blessing all nations and all people, healing what needs to be healed, inspiring what needs to be inspired, loving what needs to be loved, touching what needs to be touched. Just see her as Lazuma. Hands outstretched. With divine love, divine love, divine love, beyond discrimination, pure, holy, and merciful. Mm -hmm. She stands for truth and light And that's the soul that it takes my heart away Perched on my apron Hands outstretched with love Breathing forth the
and ever. with love. 
your hand. I know I do. Anyone else here? Let's, if you want to stand, stand. If you don't, that's fine. But let's give it home for everybody in the room, for those of us, all of us that could use a little of God's glory, a little of Hilda's love in our lives to solve some problem. Oh. throughout the month, 
Let's share this moment till the next time we meet. Oh. Yeah.
Jay Hildo Azuma Taki. Jay. Jay. Happy have we met, happy do we part, that we may meet again. Thank you very much.